Travel America RV Center of Comac. This video is an instructional on how you're going to function with your motorhome while you're out on your vacation. Hopefully it's helpful and you have a lot of key points that you can understand if there's anything you don't understand. In your binder you will find my cell phone number or the office contact and I'd be more than happy to help you guys. There's a few things I want to bring to your attention before we get started. Number one, you want to make sure that you put that app on your phone called Copilot. That Copilot app is going to be simply for a motorhome for travel. Do not use Google Maps, do not use Waze. Those apps will not keep you off the parkways and out of tunnels that do not allow you to go through because of propane. And if you need help with the um, specifications, make sure that your app is on before you pick up your motorhome and I can help you with that. Again, no parkways. You do not go on parkways like a truck. The height of it is too high for a parkway. You wanna make sure you only use your generator when you need it. The other key point I wanna to bring to your attention is that when we're dry camping, well, what does that mean? Dry camping is not hooked up to electric at all, such as NASCAR, Dover, Hither Hills. So you wanna make sure you make a habit of uh, running your generator for at least seven to eight hours during the day. So this way that keeps your coach batteries charged. Um, you also have in your motorhome, you'll notice um, we always have detectors. We got smoke, propane, and carbon monoxide. So we're definitely sending you out with the best product out there and also with all the safety precautions covered so that you guys can enjoy your vacation or whatever it is you're doing and hitting that road with safety. You'll notice on this video that there's going to be certain type of timed key boxes for different headings. Um, so if you guys have done this before and you just need to brush up on a certain area such as sewage or components, then just find that noted um, box and then just watch that portion of the video. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Have a great time. Hi everybody. This is our 28Z Chateau. You're getting ready to pick up in a day or two and I wanted to review the functions on this motorhome for two reasons. Um, it'll make it much easier for you to reference it when you're out on the road and also a couple days prior you can watch as many times as you want so when you get here you'll be a pro. Let's start with our controls first. In this motorhome our control panel is located here. The functions to this control panel are easy. We operate the water pump, we operate the slide out room, and we operate hot water. We can heat hot water on electric off the generator or being plugged in, or we can operate it off propane gas. That's usually when you're in a campground that doesn't allow you to use the generator at a certain late hour of the night, you can heat your water on propane. We don't really suggest that unless you need it, so try to use it on this side. Once you plug in at a campground, you'll turn it on and leave it on the whole entire time. The next thing is your gauges. You could tell how much gray water you have, which is your dirty sink and shower, poopy water, which is your toilet and your bathroom sink. Your fresh water will tell you how much water capacity you have on board. Now, when you use your water pump without using a garden hose, that's the tank it's pumping it out of. So you always want to keep your eye on that for refilling when you need to. Your slide out room. The slide out room is located here. You'll see from front to back. First thing is you don't want anybody sitting on the dinette table when you're moving that, it's weighted. And you don't want to have your engine on. You want to have the generator on or you want to be plugged in at the campground. So let's use the generator. If we hit it to stop and we start it up, she'll start up. Hold it until she starts. The longer you prime, the quicker she'll start, okay? Once the generator's on, 40 seconds later, you'll get a light on your microwave. The light on your microwave is your indicator that you have electric. So when you plug in at a campground or you turn on your generator, you always want to check your microwave for that illuminated light. Slide out room. We're going to hit extend and retract. So it's right now it's out. So we're going to hit retract. It's coming in. As you notice, we don't want to have anything on the floor, such as socks or shoes or anything like that. See, and then it goes back out on the extend button. Pretty cool, right? And obviously, I know you're not thinking this, but we don't drive with it out. 
The next thing we want to talk about while we're here in the same location is your air conditioning. Your air conditioning and your furnace are run on this, on this thermostat. So for air conditioning, you want to put it on cool and you, you adjust your temperature, okay? When you want furnace, you flip it to heat and you adjust your temperature. You want to remember, do not shut off your generator or unplug your extension cord without shutting off this thermostat. Thermostat, you hit to off and then you could shut down your generator. You have your TV here and your DVD for this particular television is stored in this cabinet. Regular DVDs, those are not Blu-rays. We're gonna discuss appliances now. Appliances is your refrigerator. Your refrigerator runs on gas or electric. I'm gonna set it on auto and I'm gonna put it at five for your coolest section, okay? So for the refrigerator at the bottom, freezes the top, and keep that on auto. What does auto mean? Auto means that it will function on electric or propane gas, whichever it's sensing. So if you're driving and you put your air conditioner on off your generator, then your refrigerator will think and know it's on electric and stay on electric. If you shut the generator down or you unplug from a campground, say to go to a carnival or a park, then your refrigerator automatically lights by itself on propane and that's so that there's no uh, cooling issues, there's no interruption on cooling. The next appliance is your microwave. We never operate a microwave and roof air conditioning together. If you have to use your microwave, you're going to simply shut off your thermostat, use your microwave, and then turn it back on when you're done. Your oven and your stove top in this motor home. Sparker, this is for the top. You light your oven really, really, really easy. If you're having a problem lighting it, then you want to use a barbecue lighter to give it a little help. If you want to light the oven, in the oven on a motorhome, is there's a pilot way at the back. In order to light the oven, you have to put this on pilot, push it in, and light it with a match or a barbecue lighter up underneath. The key is, is that the knob must be pushed in at the same time that you're lighting or will not release the gas to light your oven. Once you see the blue flame, bring up the knob and then your oven is lit. The next thing that we want to talk about is your TV and stereo in the bedroom. You have a TV with a DVD built in from the side, which is 12 volt. You do not need a generator to run this television. This stereo system right here gives you music inside and outside and it's Bluetooth. So it's, um, it's easy enough to, to get it paired, just follow directions in your binder. Down below is your fuse panel. That lodges your fuses and your breakers. So if you find that you tripped a breaker, that's where you're gonna go and look. If we go back up to the front, you will notice that there is charging ports for your phone. You can put your phones in this cabinet. These say ceiling lights, that's pretty standard. So you'll turn on your ceiling lights from here. There's two more switches that you'll notice. One operates the porch light outside and one operates your awning LED strip. And then down here is your awning control to bring your canopy in and out. Now, when you use the canopy, you wanna make sure that you don't leave it out when you sleep and obviously you roll it in before you leave. So whoever's in charge of your camping um, group, you wanna make sure they do a walk around before you actually leave because if you rip off this awning, it gets quite expensive. And your, your battery disconnect. I use this in the winter to store, my, store the vehicles, but if you accidentally find that something's not working, being, and also your dash radio runs off of this, then you just go simply and hit use and it reconnects the connection. You'll notice that we have fire extinguishers, propane detectors, carbon monoxide, and also smoke detectors in every motorhome for your safety. Now, if you're gonna ask me, can I run my generator while I drive or while I sleep? The answer is yes. Motorhome generators have a muffler system outside, not like a boat where a boat is on the interior under the floorboards. So you can run your generator when you sleep, but always keep your windows closed. The generator runs off the main fuel tank that you drive on. At a quarter tank of gas, your generator will not run. So make sure before you get into an event such as Dover, NASCAR, um, Penn State,
Make sure you're full of gas before you get in and your generator burns about a gallon every five hours, so it's very efficient. Um, and the last thing that we want to talk to on appliances is your air conditioner. If you notice, the air conditioner has side wing vents, okay, which open and close. You see that? So if we close these on both sides, motorhome central air then is pushed through these circular vents. The circular vents are located all around the vehicle from the front to the back because it's a large motorhome. If you find that you're not getting enough air conditioning in your bedroom, you can close some of these individual vents to push more air in other areas. Now, hot and humid days, folks. If you do not keep these vents open during hot and humid, you're going to get condensation possibly that drips from time to time. So hot and humid, leave the vents open. N nighttime, you want to close them. And if you notice, there is a note there. A little note to remind you. Okay, let's talk about sleeping accommodations. Up here is a queen size bed. This particular cushion has a plank inside that gives you extra stability, 400 pounds maximum over this opening. This cushion fits simply in here and then it became becomes a queen. You do not want to have children ever traveling up here when you're driving. It's not safe. There are seat belts located throughout the motorhome. Underneath the seating, you simply just pull them up and use the ones you need. The ladder that we provide is for the kids to connect to these little hooks once they're out here. That allows them to get up and down safely and it keeps them from stepping all over the furniture. So if you could try to do that, that would be great. Sleeping two is the couch. Really simple. Pick it up, bring it down. If you find that you need more foot space, these actually remove and they go back on when you're done. The table. If you lift these bottom cushions up and away and unlock the table, it has an unlocking lever. You unlock it, you lower the table down as the base and you're going to use these cushions from both sides like a puzzle in the middle. Really, really simple to use. Now, my suggestion for sheets, queen flats on all of this. Just tuck them in, better off to have more fabric than not enough. You also notice there's shades in all the windows, pull down blinds for privacy. In here you have a lot of cabinet space, privacy curtain, which we use on these Velcro nubs. And what it does is it blocks off anybody looking in from the campground. And the final sleeping area is your queen bed. Queen bed in the back is quite comfortable and you can get around both sides. And every mattress is covered with a vinyl mattress cover for every rental for your um, sanitation purposes. Okay, we want to talk about plumbing. The water. Remember when we talked about the water pump? If you're not hooked to a garden hose, you need to have the pump on in order to get water pressure out of your sinks, okay? If you want hot water, folks, and we're plugged in, I have the generator on, simply just put it on 110V and leave it on the whole time that you're using it, okay? The water flush in the bathroom, on the toilet. Your shower is like a little stall shower, hot and cold, like at home, very simple. Toilet, it's a pedal flush. That's how you flush it, and your sink is the same thing that you have in your own bathroom at home, so it's really simple. You want to, don't forget, remember when we discussed the toilet chemicals after you dump the toilet? This goes down the toilet bowl, and that sanitizes. When we get to the outside on the attachments, we'll review this again, but you will find these underneath the bathroom sink. And remember, Scott's toilet paper, single ply only, and no uh, makeup wipes down the toilet bowl and no paper towels either. Okay, we want to discuss a few things on the exterior. Keys. You got a round key. That's your main key. Okay, it shows your pictures unlocked and locked. It's pretty simple. And this is your deadbolt. Not everybody uses a deadbolt, but it's there if you need it. This motorhome is equipped with a TV outside and speakers. You notice the speakers, they're using that radio that's from the back bedroom, so feel free to use that. You'll have assorted outlets on the outside of your motorhome. You could sit down and plug in a blender or plug in a um, 
different type of appliance right outside. Um, you see your awning is still expanded. I'll put that in when I'm done. These are your compartments. This motorhome has the largest storage compartment capacity straight through the other side. Um, so you'll have plenty of storage. In the center circle, you will find your spare tire. All your roadside assistance and phone numbers for extended warranties will be in the binder I provided you. So of course, um, reference that if you need any kind of a tire change, but your spare is located in this compartment. On the back, your ladders have been mo modified. There is no roof access at all. Completely prohibited for the safety of yourself and your children. The bottom of the vehicle has a hitch. It's got a lock attached. So if you have a bike rack you wanna bring, bring it the day of pickup. If you wanna rent one and we have it available, $65 up to four to five bikes and we can put one on for you. On this side, if you notice, this is the other access door, okay? These locks are used on the 751 Silver Key. So every lock is keyed the same. So it makes it a little bit easier when you have to lock them. Okay, now let's talk about a few things. We get to a campground. There's three things we need to do. We need to hook up electric, water, and sewage. You're going to open this compartment and you there you will find your extension cord. You will take off your adapter. That's 30 amp, it goes right to the post. If you're at home and you pick up from me and you want to plug in because you're not leaving right away, you run a house extension cord to this adapter. Plug it in, check for your microwave light. If it's on, you're good to go. Your refrigerator will then start cooling off your house electric. Once you unplug in the morning, leave the extension cord at home and put this cord back into the camper. Never use a house extension cord to run roof air conditioning anywhere. You always want to connect this heavy cord right to the um, outlet at your family's home if you're visiting or um, at the campground on that 30 amp. Second thing, garden hose. I provided you with a garden hose. Connect garden hose here, really simple. When you get to the campground, you'll connect this connection right there and the other side to the water tap and turn it on, easy sewer hose. So now we're getting to a campground and we got to connect the sewer, right? It's obviously easier to connect this with the room slid back in, but we could still review. If you look under here, you'll see a sewer valve, okay? You'll take the cover off, the circular cover off, and you'll twist this on as tight as you can. The other end then goes into the septic. You'll find valves under here, pull valves. You see one's labeled toilet? So you got a big one and to the right you have a small one. The small one is for your sink and shower called gray. Toilet is called black. So at the campground, you will lift up the valve for the gray and leave it open at the campsite. Toilet valve stays closed until you have to dump it. How do I know when I have to dump it? Good question. I'm gonna go inside, you're gonna press the black button on the monitor panel, and it's gonna tell you what the capacity is. If the capacity is showing three quarters to full, you'll come out, you'll lift that valve up, it'll empty down into their septic, you will then close the valve and add that toilet pouch that's under the bathroom sink, down the toilet bowl. And then you're done on your sewage. Now, if you ask me a question, what happens if I'm not going to uh, I can't stay in a campground and I just want to dump? I want to dump before I come back to you. What do I do? You're going to connect the hose the same way we just discussed and you're going to pull the toilet valve up completely. You're going to empty the toilet side first because it's the most gross. And then you're going to close that and you're going to pull the gray. And the gray simply in RV world rinses your sewer hose out with your shower and your sink water. That's why you do the gray second when we do just a dump. Toilet packs are under the bathroom sink and you would add it one toilet pack down the toilet until you have to dump that toilet valve again. So that's why we try to make sure that you don't dump less than three quarters because we don't want to waste that. And the last but not least item on this side 
is going to be filling the water tank, which is here. So remember when we discussed water pump, how we're going to use the water pump without being connected to the garden hose? Well, the water pump pumps water from that tank. And that tank is found on the monitor panel that says fresh. So if you hit fresh and it says half, that means before you leave the campground or your house, you want to connect the garden hose, stick it in there, and you want to fill that to at least to the top or when it overflows. And then you put your cap back on and you check your monitor panel into fresh and it should say full. And that'll be good for about 50 gallon capacity while you're traveling. So hopefully that helped you guys out on a lot of things on trying to get ready for this trip. And I assure you, I have a lot of confidence in you. Once you do it once and you've touched everything once, you'll have it down pat. So if there's any questions in the binder, I provided my cell phone number for after hours and also the office number. Feel free to call me, text me, FaceTime me, and this way I'm able to help you guys out. I'm here and ready to help you. But if you want to just review, look for the little um, uh, uh, detailed boxes that you're going to see on this YouTube video, and they'll be separated into some categories. So this way you don't, maybe you want to look at the sewer and you don't really need to know about the awning. So navigate yourself through those little index buttons, and if there's anything else, you call me. But have a great time, guys. Hit the road, enjoy your family, and start making memories that last a lifetime.